بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Dear viewers Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to our, our program The Virtues of Islam where we've been discussing the good qualities that Islam gives to those who practice it correctly. We've arrived at the discussion after talking about debate and negotiation between us, how we should use proper etiquette and be sincere in our negotiations and our disagreements and to want the truth and that we should always use the book of Allah and always use the sunnah as our resource to solve our situation in a debate because we agree that they are both the truth and the truth is what is sought from our discussions and our disagreements. The truth is what is sought. We move from that topic to another practical topic, and that is raising our children according to these texts. Raising our children using the virtues of Islam to do so. Giving them the tarbiyah. And we've been discussing and defining what tarbiyah is according to Islam. We came to one definition which says it is a system of upbringing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded that people use to raise their children and it must be prevailed upon that families use it as a guide in raising their children and in also conducting their lives. After that, we came to another definition which says that tarbiyah, and these definitions are very close to one another. Each one adds another dimension about the topic of education and cultivation. This definition adds another dimension. هُوَ النِّظَامَ التَّرْبِوِي الَّذِي فَرَضَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ and that was the first one. The second one says, another dimension is added. نظام التربوي المنبثق من القرآن الكريم وصورة النبوية والهدف this tarbiyah, or tarbiyah, is a system of upbringing that comes from a noble Quran and from the prophetic sunnah. What is the goal? The goal is raising, caring, and directing all aspects of a child's growth and development. What is the purpose? The purpose of this is to build in him a character that prepares him to live in this world and to progress on to the hereafter. It is a system that Allah has made obligatory upon fathers and those responsible for education to apply exclusively without the influence of other systems of upbringing so that the child doesn't get the aims confused. Another definition is amaliyatu amutashara. That the nabam wal astalib mutakamila. Tabi'a min tasawwur al Islam lil kawn wal insan wal haya tahdifu ila tarbiyat al insan. Isada shay'an fa shay'an ila darajati. 
من قيام الواجبات الخلافة في الأرض عن طريق إعمارها أو ترقية حياة على ظهرها وفق منهج الله. This is very important. Another dimension of the tarbiyah is a diverse operation containing complete methods because the method comes from the Quran and it's complete and it comes from the sunnah and it's complete and they make up the deen and it's complete. So it comes from complete methods and structures that emanate from the Islamic concept of what Islam says about how Islam explains the universe. What Islam says about and how Islam explains human existence. Why we exist. What Islam says about the final destination of humankind. The aim of this cultivation and education is to nurture and educate people to arrive step by step to a stage of development wherein he can fulfill, that people can fulfill, that children who become adults later on can fulfill the obligatory duties of vicegerent upon the earth through populating it and advancing human life on the surface of the earth in accordance, accordance with Allah's divine method. So Islam explains how to live upon the earth. First it explains what's the purpose. If you ask people who have been alive for years, you ask them what's the purpose of your life? Why are you here? All our lifestyles are supposed to point out an indisputable reason why we exist. Islam does that. One of the general goals of Islamic tarbiyah, and of course, that goal or that reason we exist is to worship Allah. Every nation institutes education with the purpose of achieving beneficial goals for itself. And every civilization does this. Every civilization educates it's young about that civilization, about that way of life. Education and nurturing is the most significant avenue. It's the best way to bring about a generation that will carry the principles and values that it was taught. Islam strongly urges education that focuses upon understanding the relationship with the Creator. No confusion about that relationship. Understanding it and the way it should be carried out. Furthermore, this understanding will have a far-reaching effect upon maintaining control over behavior that bring about actual success and happiness to human beings. Because Islam explains how to behave and why we should behave that way and what's the outcome if we do, and the outcome if we don't. But of course, human beings forget. But Islam has that information. Allah says, <laughs> It is only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah. From the viewpoint of Islam, education is the instrument which building a total life affirming society can be done. A society that affirms life, that gives light to life. Ideally, this society is one that's completely immersed in the commandments of Allah. The standard of a society will be in accordance with the limits set by the Islamic legislation so that life in such a society is a model of application and dedication to the Quran and to the Sunnah. Allah says, وَيَنْصُرُوا اللَّهَ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهِ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ 
الذين إن مكناهم في الأرض أقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وأمروا بالمعروف ونهونا عن المنكر Verily Allah will help those who help his cause Truly Allah is all strong, almighty Those Muslims who if we give them power in the land they enjoy the salah and they pay zakah and they enjoin in ma'roof, meaning tawheed and all everything that Islam uh, commands, and they forbid munkar, polytheism and everything that Islam forbids. Allah also says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ لَذِينَ آمِنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لِيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ بِالْأَوْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْرِهِمْ وَلِيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ أَلْبِعْتَضَّى لَهُمْ وَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُ بِي شَيْئًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْمُؤَثَاسِقُونَ The Quran also says, Allah has promised those among you who believe and do righteous good deeds, He will certainly grant them succession in the land as He granted those before them. And He will grant them the authority to practice their religion. Which he, has shown, which he has chosen for them, meaning Islam. And he will certainly give them an exchange of safe security after their fear, provided they, the believers, worship Allah and do not associate anything in worship with me, meaning Allah. But whoever disbelieves unto this, they are the fasiqun, the values and disobedient to Allah. So we see from these verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises the people who obey him properly and who worship properly, believe properly that he will help them in the earth and give them safety and security in their societies. The Messenger of Allah also has said them was an example of the kind of behavior and treatment of others that must be instilled into the minds of those who are raised so they can use it as a model in every part of their lives. So learning the Quran and following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an example is an absolute must in the tarbiyah of a child. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam إِنَّمَا بِعِثْتُ لِوَتِّمِمَ مَكَارَمِ الْأَخْلَاقِ He said, I have been sent to exemplify noble behavior, to complete it. Whatever nobility people had in their societies of noble behavior, the Messenger of Allah also completed the nobility of their behavior. And this completion of behavior in Islam is known as the Islamic values. People of knowledge say that this completion of akhlaq, of proper behavior, is the values of Islam. And people say human value, the human value of a Muslim is his behavior. And that is what he values. He values his actions based upon the book and his actions based upon the sunnah. Islam promotes the acquisition of every science and skill that equips individuals and societies with every tool they need to populate the earth in accordance with what Allah wants. Allah says, And he has subjected to you all that's in the heavens and all that's in the earth. It is all as a favor, meaning a kindness from him. Everything that we have on the earth that was given to us and from the heavens from Allah is a kindness from him so that we will populate the earth properly and decently and we'll worship properly and decently and we'll run our affairs properly according to his will. All these things are included in the aim of raising a generation of believers that work for a better life in this world and a better hereafter. They are shareholders in the elevation of their ummah and they are also shareholders in the elevation of societies in which the Muslims live. 
at the core of this tarbiyah, at the basis of this tarbiyah, this cultivation, this education, are the children. The meaning of tarbiyah from the standpoint of Islam is a system of upbringing that comes from the Quran and the prophetic sunnah with the goal of raising and caring for all aspects of a child's growth and development. So at the center of this tarbiyah are the children. A child's life and intellect must be occupied to maintain the nature that Allah placed in him, meaning his fitrah. His intellect must be formed with the proper understanding so that his life and his practices and his experience only reflect that understanding. This is not easy. Raising a child takes patience, brothers and sisters. As those of you who are parents, you already know. This takes a lot of patience. Prayer to Allah, it takes having knowledge. It takes patience. It takes knowing the needs of children. It takes knowing how they should dress properly at each age. Pro toys that are suitable to their age. It takes knowing about things in health, especially in today's world. We need to know many, many things about the health of children. A sick child cannot serve the Ummah of Islam. And so you and I, as parents and grandparents, and aunts and uncles, we have to be diligent in how we nourish our children's bodies. No one said it's easy, but it is doable. It is possible when we depend upon Allah and we obey Him. Some scholars say the foundation of a child's personality is formed when he is young. And that's to be understood also. A child's personality is formed when he is very young and not very old. More about this in our next episode, inshallah. I'm Talib Abdullah for the Georgia Broadcast Corporation. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.